Peekaboo. Hi guys. Welcome back. I know it's been a minute since I posted a video, but I've been kind of busy playing my new game Kingdom Hearts and I'm in love with it. So I did a poll on my Instagram, Twitter, everything that I have, asking you guys what kind of video you wanted. And a lot of you said that you wanted a story time. So, story time. But before we get into that, I would like you guys to do me just a little favor, just, just a little favor. And go down below, hit that subscribe button, turn on my post notifications so you get notified whenever I make a new video. And go down and follow me on all my social medias that will be linked all down below. My vlog channel will also be linked down below. Go give that a follow as well. But here we are. Let's get into it. So when I got out of high school, I went to work at a company. It wasn't my first job, but it was my first <laughs> legal job. You can read all about my book. Oh! My book will be linked down below as well. So I got this job from a family friend. Her name was Christina. So I got this job from a family friend. Her name was Christina. Hey girl. Basically what the job was is we went to a school and cleaned it. I was not excited to do this mainly because I hate cleaning. But I was also excited because it was my first job and it was a full-time job. It was getting 40 hours a week, $9 an hour to start. I was 18. That was a lot of money to me at the time considering I went from nothing. So I get this job and on my very first day, I walk into the building I was cleaning, which was the middle school, mind you. This was the only middle school in the entire district, mind you. Again, keep this in mind. There's seven elementary schools, around maybe four, four high schools, maybe, maybe two. I, I might be thinking wrong, I think maybe, yeah, there's two and one middle school. This middle school looked like an asylum. I was terrified to walk in there, but I, I walk in there and I have to find this guy. He's my, not my boss, but the head custodian. I'll call him Earl. So I'm walking in there and I was told to go find Earl. I'm looking around, I really can't find anybody to talk to. There's nobody in sight because this place is so fucking huge. I keep walking around and I'm walking around and I somehow end up in the basement. Mind you, this basement is two stories. So there's the third floor, the second floor, the first floor, and then basement levels one and two. I had gone all the way to basement level two. How? No idea. So while I'm down there, it's kind of like the cellar part. So like the walls are molded, everything's dripping. It's just disgusting. And I turn around and I see this figure and I get really scared because again, my first day, I don't know where I am. I haven't seen anyone yet. And I see this figure. Now, this is not meant to be racist. It's just what happened. We had a darker skinned guy that worked with us and he was like, darker than my soul. Dark. And all of a sudden he says, are you lost? And I, I literally think a part of my soul left my body. I got so scared, I swear to God, I that shit hit the floor. I was, nope, I, I had accepted death in that moment that, yep, first day of work, I'm gonna get murdered. Go to work, they said. Be an adult, you said. And I'm here getting murdered my first day of work. So it turns out that his name was Frank. We'll call him Frank. Frank. So he, I asked him where I could find Earl. He takes me all the way to the third floor where it is scorching hot out because if you're a custodian, you know the pain. They don't leave the AC on for you during the summer because it's a waste of money. Or so they say. Now, I already was kind of pissed because again, I had a little bit of longer hair at the time. I mean, it wasn't huh, this, but it was, you know, hot. Now mind you, we're on the third floor, heat rises. So the third floor is the hottest. So I find Earl and I get introduced to Star and Common, which were two custodians that worked there as well. I was shadowing them. So we worked for about half the day and I worked from 3 p.m. to midnight. God, don't ever work second shift, it's horrible. So I worked from 3 p.m. to midnight. So around eh, seven o'clock, we take our lunch. And Star and Comet had walked down the street to get food. Now, I'm stupid and did not bring food for myself because why would I need it? 
by basically sitting in the corner crying because I have no food and I'm starving. And I can't eat until I go home. So after we're done eating, they take me to this room upstairs and they just sit down. And I'm like, so are we done? And they're like, yeah, we're just gonna sit here, put our feet up, relax, and play on our phone. Fuck yeah, okay, I can get down with that shit. So I worked there for about three months. Then my boss, I'll call him Dick, because that's very accurate, comes to me and says, hey, I'm gonna transfer you to the elementary school and the high school. He wanted me to do both. So I said, okay, well, which one is it? The elementary school or the high school? And he's like, oh, it's both. I said, I think the fuck not, you trick ass bitch. And he's like, no, I'm dead serious. We want you to do a split shift. I'm like, okay, does anybody else in this company do a split shift? No, no one else does. So what the fuck makes me so damn special that I have to now clean two buildings by myself? I threatened to quit, it was a, it was a time. So Christina had quit her job at GCA, which was this company's name. Apparently her and Dick got into an argument, oh my god, I'm gonna fall. Her and Dick got into an argument and things got really heated fairly quickly. Oh dear. So I lost my right to work because I hadn't been driving yet. So my friend, Haley, her mom drove me to work for a week until I got my license. And then, you know, got my truck road legal and went to work. So I was only supposed to do the elementary school for half the day, and then once that was done, I would go and do the uh, high school, which was just a small little high school. It was like the high school board office. They used it for like the special needs education and the English as a second language and all that stuff. It was a really nice school. Well, I was scheduled to clean in the board office. I'm not gonna talk much about the elementary school because nothing really happened there to the point where I was like, oh my god, I wanna stab somebody. But the high school, <laughs> oh my god. So I walk in there, and it turns out the woman training me for the high school, her name was Daniela. Just wanna let you guys know I am changing all these names for privacy reasons. I don't wanna get anybody in trouble or make them feel huh, less like a human. So Daniela's training me. And that is actually Star's mom and Comet's aunt, because those Star and Comet were cousins. Confusing. So then I meet Sheila. Sheila was the head custodian at the high school that I was working at. And then there was another one, his name was Cliff. Cliff was just an old, he was cranky. He was, ooh, he did not like me. Because I made a deal with myself that, you know, I will treat you the way that you treat me. And for some reason, this company does not like to treat you well. So I tended to pop off whenever they said something I just did not care for. So anyway, we're a couple months in. Daniela leaves. She ended up breaking her leg by going down the stairs, but then she got ended up getting fired from the company because she broke her leg. And it was the company's fault. So I really don't know what happened with her. I hope she's doing well. If you're here, you know who you are. I love you, Missy. So right now it's just me, Sheila, and Cliff working in the high school. Now, it's Christmas time at this point. Ice, snow, winter. So basically what had happened is there was a death in the company. And it wasn't a boss. It was a employee. It, ne it didn't happen at work. I just want to say that it did not happen on the school property. It did not repeat. Did not happen on the school's property. But what did happen is Cliff ended up getting severe pneumonia and told Dick about it. Well, Dick ignored it and sent him out into the cold to shovel salt all that every day for a whole ass month. So when Christmas morning comes around, I get a call from Sheila asking if I had talked to Cliff. Now, mind you, she knows I don't like Cliff and Cliff sure as hell does not like me. So why would I have talked to him? Well, as it turns out, Cliff unfortunately passed away on that Christmas morning from pneumonia. And as far as I know, this is what I've heard, don't take my word for it, the company got sued by his brother who also worked for the company. I do not blame him whatsoever for suing the shit out of that company. They deserved it, honestly, did. Once that is all done, I'm already getting kind of riled up because I've been written up for every fucking reason known to man. I have Crohn's disease. So I had to go and have a procedure done to test for Crohn's disease. And my boss knew about that. He knew I needed two days off. I went to him and said, I need two days off for my surgery to see what's going on with my intestines. He said, okay. So I go, I have the surgery. 
Now, I had called off that morning before I went under and said, hey, remember, I'm going under for surgery. I'm at the hospital right now. Goodbye. I go back to work the next day. Remember, I was not supposed to go back to work yet. I had to have stayed in bed for two days after this. It was just a colonoscopy, but still. I go back to work, and the fucker wrote me up for having my surgery because I missed a day of work. I had missed a couple of days because when my flare-ups get too bad, I can't really move out of, you know, the room. Or, you know, if it snowed too bad. This place was an hour away. Like, fucking be grateful. I'm driving an hour away to come fucking clean for you and you're gonna treat me like shit? Fuck you. Besides of that fun shit, there was also drama between the elementary school's lead, her name was Alex, and there was drama between Sheila. The two used to be friends, did not get along, and then she Sheila's over here, Alex is over here, and I'm deadass in the middle because they love to talk shit about each other to me. And I have to hear all of it. Now, mind you, this bitch likes some good tea, but at the same time, like, please shut up. Like, I'm tired of hearing it. I'm really here to vacuum and sweep and mop and clean. Like, shut up. I was tired of hearing about it every other fucking day. It was long days. No matter what I did, like, okay, I'm gonna tell you. One thing that really pissed me the fuck off about this company is I worked my ass off for them. It wasn't ever good enough. I would sit there and bust my ass to the point where I was just drenched in sweat and everything and then Dick comes to me, the teachers are complaining because this wasn't done, this wasn't done, this wasn't done, this wasn't done. Why don't you look at your security cameras and then you'll see that yes, the fuck it was done. I really don't think it was the teachers so much as it was Sheila because I didn't hear this directly from Dick. Sheila would tell me, hey, this is what Dick said, you know. You have to work on that. There was an actual time. <laughs> and it was a true thing. It wasn't just Sheila pulling my leg. It wasn't Dick being a dick. <laughs> it was a real thing. So, in the back of the board office. Oh! Before that. So, I was scheduled to clean the board office. And Sheila was up towards the front of the high school. So, when you walk in... Here's the board office, long hallway, high school. This is the front, that's the back. You get it? Good, we got it. I was cleaning the board office. Well, apparently, not well enough. Because Dick had called Sheila and said that too many people were complaining about me, so they wanted us to switch. So then I was cleaning the high school, and she was cleaning the board office. Here's the reason the board office kicked me out of cleaning that area. Okay, it's a long, lonely night. I get bored. Both of the custodians are on opposite sides of the building. So I would put in my headphones and I would, you know, call my friends and talk to them while I'm cleaning and vacuuming and all that jazz. These people are supposed to be out of there by 6 o'clock. No later than 6 o'clock. I would get there at 6.30 because I had to leave the elementary school and come there at 6.30. So I would call my friends. These bitches were not gone. So what they're doing is they're sitting there on the computer while I'm trying to do my fucking job and eavesdropping on my phone calls, saying that I'm acting inappropriate, I'm saying uh, vulgar language. You are interrupting a private conversation because you are not supposed to be in the fucking building. Bitch, leave. I swear to God, if I see them now, I'm just... <coughs> ah! Frustrating. Okay, back to that little story about, you know, the incident. There was this office in the back by the high school and now it was my job to clean it. I ate my lunch in there maybe one time. And when I drink coffee in the morning, it's in the morning on my way to work. Now mind you, I start my day at the elementary school and then go to the high school. Pay attention because that is important. So basically what this teacher was saying is that he had me on camera eating in his office, drinking my coffee, and I spilled coffee all over his desk and there's a coffee ring about that fucking pig on his white calendar. Okay, yes, I did eat lunch in your office, but the one thing you need to get your shit right about, I did not drink coffee in your fucking office. It sounds so stupid. It seems like it doesn't, it shouldn't even matter, but I damn near lost my job over it because he's a fucking thot. 
He threw the biggest bitch fit, told Dick he wanted me fired, told Sheila he wanted me fired, so I finally confronted him. I said, do you have a fucking problem? He's like, who are you? I'm like, bitch, what do you mean, who am I? I am the bitch. But you said spill coffee all over your desk even though I don't drink coffee in this building. He's like, oh yeah, you need to stay out of my office, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, you know what? Fine, I'll stay out of your office. You fucking clean it. It's like, no, that's your job. I'm like, you don't want me in your fucking office, so you can grab my fucking vacuum. I give you permission. Grab the dustpan, grab the broom, go fucking clean it yourself. It's like, no, that's what we have you for. I'm like, I am not your fucking maid, dick lick. I am a custodian. It is my job to clean your classroom, clean your office, and go about my day. I am not your fucking maid. I am not going to be there when you want some fucking chicken soup made. I'm not going to be there to toast your strudel. I'm not going to do any of that shit. You want a banana peel? Fucking peel it yourself. That's not my job. Throw the banana peel in the garbage? I would gladly take the garbage out. That was my job. My job was not to serve each individual teacher. My job was to serve the whole school. So then we fast forward and my Crohn's disease is getting worse and 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 oh my god I almost died. Now, mind you, there was already death in the company because the, the bosses did not listen to what he said about his health. So this already concerned me because I already had restrictions about what I could and could not do. For example, I could not lift more than 50 pounds. They were having me lift 80 pounds a day. I couldn't. It was to the point where I tried lifting the 80 pounds and a stack of books fell right on my head. That shit hurt. I never hated something so much that I actually went home every night and cried about it. I didn't even do that with high school and I hated high school. That will be a separate video. I've never done that. I've never hated something so much it made me want to rip my actual hair out. I would go home to Steve and I would cry every night going to bed and just, I would beg him if I could quit. This was the final straw. So I went to go see Evanescence in 2017 in November and I was still working there in September. I requested November 30th, December 1st and 2nd off. So that way I had time to go to Chicago and enjoy it because as far as I knew, they weren't coming to, de to uh, Detroit. Later on, they did. Which makes me think like, would, have I, would I have stayed at that job if Evanescence came to Detroit? Because the whole reason I took that time off and the whole reason this exploded the way it did was because I wanted to go to Chicago. So anyway, I, you have to fill out a vacation request. So I filled out my vacation request and I gave it to Dick. Now by that time, a new bitch had come in to replace Cliff. Her name was Jessica. Jessica was a bitch. She liked to think she was head boss. She sat there to me and Sheila so many times and said, well, I'm boss. That's how it goes, because I'm, I'm boss. Bitch, you did not hire me. I was hired before you. You did not sign my check. Oh my God. Quick side note. So Sheila and I were kind of really close. So we would hang out a lot during summer cleaning because there wasn't a whole lot to do. And Jessica would kind of go off and do her own shit. So me and Sheila were hanging out the one day and our pay stubs came. So Sheila went down there to grab them. Now my first name matches close to Jessica's real name. So she grabbed the wrong pay stub. Not knowing it, I opened it. Now mind you, at the time, I think I made $11 an hour. So I opened this pay stub, and I go, wow, $1,000? I got a raise. I'm like, I don't remember making $14 an hour. I look at the pay stub and it's fun. I flipped my shit. She was just hired, and I've been working here for two years, and she got $14 an hour? Sheila worked there for six years and only got a quarter more than me. What the fuck were you doing, Jessica? Jessica! Anyway, so I go to fill out my vacation request and give it to Dick. Well, the next day I get a phone call from Sheila while I'm at the elementary school telling me I'm not going to be happy. And whenever she calls me telling me I'm not going to be happy, it means a bitch is about to walk out the building. So I go over there and I say, okay, well, why am I not going to be happy? And she showed me my vacation request. It was ripped in half with a little sticky note that said, you cannot request vacation time that far in advance. So I said, what? I'm giving you three months notice that is fucking amazing that I'm planning that far ahead because I never do. So I call him and I said, hey, 
what's this about me not being able to request it that far in advance? Like, it sh it's a good thing. And he's like, oh, well, it's not just that. It's just that I already requested that time off. I'm like, hold on. You're telling me that this bitch that we just got into a fight about because she's making 14 and I'm making 11 and I've been here longer. Sheila's been here longer. And mind you, Jessica just went on vacation to New York. So I'm like, so wait a minute, you're telling me that Jessica put in already, before I did, three months in advance for the same exact days that I did. Doesn't that sound like, I don't know, uh, bullshit? It was such bullshit. He was such a fucking bad liar. So then I finally called him over. I said, what the actual fuck? He's like, what? I'm like, this is fucking ridiculous. I, goodbye. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, first of all, no. Second of all, no. And on top of that, they were trying to add more onto my schedule. Cause you know, cleaning two schools a day wasn't enough. Apparently I couldn't even do that right. So I wrote them a little note saying, you know, you are so disorganized. You are so rude to your employees. You don't treat anybody well. You don't do shit correctly. So the way that insurance works is if you were canceled from an insurance, your company, if it offers benefits, legally has to open it back up for you. My company would not do it. And I was without health insurance for a year. Not good, especially with my condition. So I turned in my badge, turned in my key. Dick doesn't know I had quit. I wrote the note, hugged Sheila, said goodbye, cried about it because I was upset I'm losing my job because you're all idiots. So I get in my car and I start driving home and I get a phone call from Dick. And he goes, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm fucking going home. And he's like, why? I'm like, fuck you, Dick, I quit. And he's like, oh, don't, don't quit. I was just hard on you because you're lazy. Please come back. Wait, <laughs> what? Hold on, you want me to come back and work for you and you think the way to do that is telling me the reason you're so hard on me is because I'm lazy. Even though I busted my ass more than anybody in this fucking company to please you and that still wasn't enough, I swear to God, I swear, it seemed like whoever did the littlest work got praised the most. And whoever did the most amount of work got shat up the most. So yeah, ever since then I have not worked for them. They did call me back one time to see if I would come back to work. The day after I quit, I actually did end up going back to say goodbye to Sheila and the other girl at the elementary school. Well, Jessica, being a spiteful bitch, called Dick when my car was outside waiting for Sheila to get there. He then comes and knocks on my window and I roll it down. I said, can I fucking help you? He's like, you know, you can't be on property, right? I said, huh? He's like, yeah, you can't be on the, the property. I said, it's public property. He's like, it doesn't matter. You left, you left violently. I said, I left you a fucking note that said, get your shit right. That's not me leaving violently. Me leaving violently is throwing shit at you. That's leaving violently. And if you want me to do that, try my bitch. I'm like, you can't tell me to get off public property. He's like, I can and I did. If you don't leave the cops, will be called. I'm like, let them come because I'll just declare martial law on your ass and this will be fucking easy as shit. He's like, no, you can't come back. I said, so wait, let's say 10 years down the road, I have a baby and then another 10 years, gotta go to school, right? So you're saying I can't put my child in any of this school district's schools because I used to be a custodian 20 years ago? He's like, well, I mean, that's kind of exaggerating. I'm like, that's not exaggerating, that's reality, you dumbass. You're telling me I can't be on the property for how long? A year, two years, four years, five years? Like, where's your logic? So oh, it turned into this pissing match. Sheila finally gets there. And I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I finally hug her goodbye. And that was it. It was the last time I ever stepped foot there. I took Haley to work a couple of times because she lived with me and I had a car, she didn't, whatever. I just, I never went inside to see anybody. I will never go back, don't ever work for a company called GCA. It's no longer called GCA anymore. It is now called something I can't say. Not because I can't pronounce it, but because due to legality reasons, I technically cannot say their name. But what I can tell you is Dick and all his other higher ups still work for that company. And so does Haley. I feel so bad. Anyway, guys, yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this story time. If you did, make sure you go down below, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and like my video. Make sure you share it with your friends, get a good laughs. 
And I wanted to say thank you, thank you so much for making my Twitter followers go up so high within the last week. I went from 138 and I'm now at like 805. So thank you so much. You can follow me at Twitter, Instagram, you can even follow my Facebook page and my Snapchat. And you can read my new book, will be down below. I will also have a song coming out sometime this year, don't know when. You can follow me at Twitter, Instagram, you can even follow my Facebook page and my Snapchat. And you can read my new book, will be down below. I will also have a song coming out sometime this year, don't know when. But other than that, I will see you guys soon. Bye!